Rookie minicamp is starting up this weekend as everyone has their sights set on quarterback Jaden Daniels. It's the offensive line protecting him that we're going to want to take a look at. That and more coming up on this episode of Locked On Commanders. You are Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. And from there, you will get news analysis, one-on-one conversations, inside information, and bonus content delivered directly to your phone via text message. No hashtags, no apps, no filters, just your phone, my phone. I text you, you text me, all kinds of cool stuff going on over there. Usually, uh, head over to joinsubtext.com slash Commanders again and text me today. I'm David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for commandergameday.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's fan nation here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. Everydayers, greatly appreciate you for coming through and continuing to come through and support the program. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. It's a mobile hit twist on the classic game Monopoly. Join your friends. Download Monopoly Go today for free on the App Store or the Google Play Store. On today's episode, we are going to hit the mailbag. It's where we left off last week. So this is a Your Team Every Day show. Unfortunately, uh, I got knocked on my butt pretty heavy uh, by COVID. So I've been out for about the last week. So I apologize for that. Appreciate all of you for continuing to come through and support. Appreciate all the insiders for your uh, text messages of well wishes throughout the entire week. Uh, not completely back. I'm not 100%. I'm still struggling a little bit, but I think we're uh, we're able to give it a go here today. So we're going to pick up with the mailbag. We're actually going to start off the week with two mailbags. Got a lot of great mailbag questions, so we want to hit those. Uh, today we're going to talk about some a question about draft classes. How many draft classes do the Washington Commanders need to nail to become legitimate championship contenders? We're talking some dis- displaced veterans, kind of an early on the bubble conversation about some veterans who might be getting displaced due to some rookie arrivals. But first, we're going to start with the offensive line. A lot of mailbag questions about the offensive line. Uh, so we're going to hit as many of these as we possibly can. And we're going to start off with looking at one of the guys that we are going to see at the end of this week. So the Washington Commanders rookie minicamp begins on Friday, goes into the weekend. Uh, the day that the media goes out there, I will be out there Friday, uh, May 10th. That'll be the day that we get to take a look at the rookies. So we'll see Jane Daniels, but we'll also see Brandon Coleman. And that's where we're going to start out here. Billy came through the mailbag and said, what's the deal with Brandon Coleman? Isn't he supposed to be the next David Bakhtiari? Green Bay Packers tackle. Everything I've seen has him going to guard. If so, then we still need two tackles. What are the options if Coleman is a guard? So yeah, the conversation about Brandon Coleman has basically centered around whether or not he is a guard or a tackle. Now, when the Washington commanders drafted him, it was announced at the podium that he was a tackle. And depending on which broadcast you were watching in the media workroom in Ashburn, Virginia, I think we had the ESPN broadcast going on. I want to say that's the broadcast we had turned on in the media workroom. Uh, Might have been NFL Network, so don't don't hold me on that one. But uh, whichever broadcast it was, uh, again, at the podium, it was announced tackle Brandon Coleman. and the the broadcast team was clearly kind of hesitant, right? There was there was, there was kind of a noticeable pause uh, in, in their analysis of the pick. And on the screen, all their graphics said guard, and and then they talked about it. And even the even the folks that were talking about it said, look, you know, can he translate tackle? Sure, you know, a lot of projections have him inside as guard. Obviously, this team believes he can be a tackle. Uh, we were told by the team leadership after the pick after the draft that they have him as a tackle. So he's going to come in here as a tackle. They're not looking at him at guard. They're looking at him at tackle. And that's where they want to have him. Um, An insider came through. We were having this conversation through text message with some insiders. And one of them came through and actually pointed out that Duke Manyweather, who is a uh, offensive line guru, he holds a lot of offensive line clinics. A lot of NFL players use him, go through him, trust him uh, as as a mentor, as a guru. Like I said, uh, he has Brandon Coleman as a tackle. And I'll tell you right now, if Duke Manyweather has him as a tackle, I'm going to I'm gonna go, yes, he's a tackle. I'm not going to go against anything that Duke says in that in that realm. So, you know, the question is, is it going to work? And that's that's a question that obviously we can't really discuss right now because I haven't even seen him on the field for a practice, right? We'll see him again on Friday for the first time. 
Uh, I'm not gonna be able to come back Friday and give you a definitive yes or no. I can tell you kind of was what he looked like as far as what I could see and what I saw in that practice. And then we'll go from there. Uh, probably get a chance to talk to him as well. Um, you know, different teams do this differently. Sometimes teams just kind of say, okay, the rookies are available, grab them off the field or whatever. Sometimes they grab a few specific ones, put them at a podium. I expect that what the commanders will probably do is put a, a you know, a, a select uh, three or four at microphones for us. And then the rest will basically be just, you know, kind of uh, available coming off the field as we can get them. Um, if Brandon Coleman, and this is obviously looking past rookie mini camp, looking into training camp, preseason, regular season. If Brandon Coleman, either, either, either the team says, okay, our bad, he's a guard and moves him to guard. Or if he stays tackle, but he's not ready to start, what are the options? Well, on the current roster, Cornelius Lucas, I think is the number one option. He's your, he's your left tackle. If it's not Brandon Coleman. Trent Scott is another name, another veteran to look out for. Brain Daniels, who I still contend is a guard, is better suited as a guard in the NFL. Uh, the, the commanders have him listed as an offensive lineman, so they don't have him listed as a tackle or a guard. Either way, uh, he would be an option. Alex Akinbulu is actually a right tackle, right? But I mean, if you just want to talk about the tackle realm, he's obviously on the roster and certainly a possibility. And then on the free agent market, there's a guy like Donovan Smith, who most recently just played for the Kansas City Chiefs last year, won his second Super Bowl. He also won a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, with Tom Brady. That first year he was in Tampa. And then you got David Bakhtiari. You know, I don't want to dive too deep into these guys right now. David Bakhtiari is someone that we've talked about every day. So remember, we've talked about him a couple of times. Donovan Smith is someone that I'm very familiar with in my time covering the Buccaneers. Um, I'll just tell you this. He's, 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 he's a serviceable left tackle. You know what I mean? He's not the best in the league. He's not the worst in the league. Um, he has, he's going to have moments, you know, if you turn on the tape, there's going to be moments where you're just left scratching your head, very frustrated. And there's moments and there's, there's games where, you know, you just don't even notice them. That's pretty much the best thing about an offensive lineman is you don't notice them because it means they're not messing up. Right. Is he better than Charles Leno? Um, I would say if he is, it's a hair, maybe better than Charles Leno. And it's more so that he's younger than Charles Leno more than it is that he's better. Um, but I would say they're probably, you know, around the same, although Donovan's not coming off of hip surgery, which is certainly impactful. So, you know, so again, so the, a lot of questions about Brandon Coleman on whether or not he's going to be attacked, whether or not he's going to be a guard. I think at the end of the day, when you turn on the tape and, and again, uh, I, I had a lot of plans for tape studies and all this stuff during the last week, but getting knocked on my butt, I was able to watch a little bit before I really got knocked out of service. Um, and you certainly like the aggression you see at him as a blocker and you certainly see some traits uh, that could translate. The question is, are they going to translate from the college tape to the NFL tape? Because the action's a lot faster. The, the action's a lot more aggressive. And that's what we have to see for ourselves. How much we're going to be able to see in rookie camp again is rookie camp. So it's not, there's no pads, there's no full contact. So it is kind of hard to see a little bit of that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? If you trust what this team has been doing and you trust what these decision makers have been doing, offensive line uh, coach Bobby Johnson, I've talked to several players in the locker room and he's getting you know good reviews right now uh, from those guys. So you just have to trust in the coaches, trust what they're doing. Uh, and trusting those veterans to also bring him along and 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 make them part of the unit. So we'll see what we get out of him. Uh, that's just the scratching the surface on the offensive line, though. You guys have a lot of questions about the offensive line group, so we're going to continue that on the other side of this coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're going to do that thanks to our friends over at FanDuel. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL. And FanDuel is going to give you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers, you get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Again, with any winning $5 bet. The Minnesota Timberwolves upset the defending NBA champion Denver Nuggets in Game 1 of their series, and Game 2 is happening Monday nights. So if you think the Minnesota Timberwolves can do it again and get a 2-0 lead heading back to Minnesota, throw $5 down on that. If you're right, you get $150 in bonus bets after that game comes to an end. If you think the Denver Nuggets are going to pull it out championship style and even up the series trying to take one back in Minnesota coming up this week, then go ahead and put $5 on that. If you follow me on Twitter, I said before this series even started that this was going to be the most entertaining series of the NBA postseason, and I think that is coming true. Game one of the Cleveland Cavaliers against the Boston Celtics tips off Tuesday night as well. So whatever it is you want to bet on, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book.
Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listen or your first view today and every day, every day. Thanks again for coming through on a regular basis like you do. Come back tomorrow. We'll have more mailbag questions here from Commanders fans. In the meantime, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your television all day? Do you have to turn down the volume when all the shouting starts? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Continuing on with our mailbag here, continuing on with the offensive line conversation, Bill came through and asked, does the Washington management feel that they have the personnel for a top 16 offensive line or are they still looking? As Charles Leno was Washington's second rated offensive lineman last year, are there plans to talk with his reps on a one-year contract? So, Here's what I would say about the ranking expectation first and foremost, Bill. I don't think anybody in the Washington Commanders office would necessarily say this is where we think our group is going to stand ranking wise in the NFL right now. Um, and, I, and I don't think that's even just outwardly conversation, right? Like, obviously, if we asked them, they probably, you know, would, would stay away from it just from a PR perspective and bulletin board perspective and all that stuff. But I think in reality, this season is very much a fact finding season. I think that's. That's kind of just the 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 motto or not the motto, the the tempo of the year. And I think it kind of has to be right. Like, because not only are you bringing in new people, but you're bringing in new people to do things a completely different way than you've been doing them and not just organizationally. Right. It's like and everybody says that 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 schemes and everything are pretty much the same right everybody kind of runs the same route tree everybody kind of runs the same defenses right and then to a certain extent that's certainly true and that's why you've heard dan quinn and these other coaches emphasize style so much more than they have scheme but style matters and and, and the style of play that this washington commander's coaching staff wants to introduce is completely different than the style of play these this, these washington commanders players have been playing then you add on the fact that over half the roster is is new Right. So you believe you're bringing in players. And to some extent, they know some of these guys, Dorrance Armstrong, for example, they know him. Um, it's not a projection. It's I know that you can play our style of football. But some of these guys you don't know. Frankie Louvu, you believe he can, but you don't know him. Right. So so there's those types of things. Um, so you're, you're looking to see how many players that you're inheriting and keeping can get with this style of football and do it well and do it consistently. How many of the players that we brought in that we think will fit actually fit? How many of the, how, how impactful are the guys that we brought in that we know fit to help the other guys that we hope fit actually fit, if that makes sense. So this whole off season is, is, is or this whole season is really, don't get me wrong. They're not, it's not like they're going out there tanking. It's not like they're going out there and, you know, saying, Hey guys, we don't really care if we win. We just want to see who's, how good you are. No, like they want to go out there and compete. They want to go out there and put together a competitive package, obviously, but this year to me is much more about setting up next year. Uh, and I think that when you go back through the cap situation, the fact that this team is projected to have over a hundred million dollars in salary cap again next year. And the fact that they did not make, you know, they, they probably had the opportunity to move up in the first round next year or this year to go get another tackle or get an earlier tackle, but they had to give up future draft capital for it. Right. Had to either give up a next year first or next year second. And they didn't want to give up that future draft capital because again, this year is all about setting up next year uh, more than more likely than not. So I don't know that they have an expectation or I think it's more so just let's put the best guys that we can find on the, on the field that we believe we can groom for the future. And once we know who they are after the season, we'll, we'll figure out the next step. If that makes sense. Um, as far as Charles Leno coming back, I don't see that happening. I don't think Charles Leno, uh, I honestly, I think there's a, there's a, I don't know. I, I don't want to put a number on it, but I think there's a good possibility that Charles Leno uh, actually retires um, versus coming back to play at all. Um, you know, I don't know how his recovery is going right now. Hopefully it's going well. Um, certainly if he wants to continue playing, I hope that he gets the opportunity to, um, but I don't see him coming back to Washington. Aaron came through with a mailbag question. Uh, do you see a signing a veteran left tackle or putting our faith in, Corn or in Cornelius Lucas or Brandon Coleman? Um, yeah, I don't see them signing a veteran left tackle. Um, you know, I, I certainly get the draw to the idea, Donovan Smith, David Bakhtiari, like we just talked about. Um, but I do believe that this team wants to see Brandon Coleman be the starting left tackle, at least for this year. Uh, if not, I think they'll go with Cornelius Lucas. I think that's that's probably the end state here uh, that we're looking at, unless both those guys are just really, really bad. If, if that happens, 
you know, so basically from now to the start of training camp, I don't see any new additions outside of maybe injuries happening. Knock on wood, that doesn't happen. Um, but unless both those guys go in there at left tackle and both of those guys are just really bad and just really not getting what Bobby Johnson and the offensive staff is putting together. I don't think that we're going to see, you know, a new addition like like one of those guys, Don Smith or David Bakhtiari or anybody else. All right. Now let's move into some questions about some displaced veteran op options or possibilities here. Usually we call these bubble players, right? But we're not in training camp yet, so we're not going to call them bubble players uh, just yet. But David came through and asked, who do you think will be the number three quarterback, Jake Fromm or Sam Hartman? Uh, do you think that any of the UDFAs will make the 53 man roster? So that's, those are, those are two very interesting questions. Um, as far as Jake Fromm and Sam Hartman are concerned, and, and, you know, we also have to throw in Jake Driscoll uh, in that conversation, right? Jake Driscoll is, was, was signed uh, to the roster as well. So really you've got a three man race there, Jake Driscoll, Jake Fromm uh, and Sam Hartman, the, the undrafted free agent from Notre Dame. Um, look, I think with Sam Hartman, like I get that there's, there's some good things to like, and then there's some things that people want to want to believe in. I just, you know, I've never really seen a whole lot out of Sam Hartman. I think a lot of, even when you turn on like a Notre Dame highlight reel of Sam Hartman, if you really pay attention, a lot of the throws that are his highlight throws are behind or his receivers are having to come back to the ball or they're having to make really good uh, adjustments, holds on to the ball way too long for a college quarterback. And, and, you know, when you, when you do that as a college quarterback, uh, it's hard to get even faster as an NFL quarterback. Um, so right now I put Jake Fromm in the driver's seat of that. You know what I mean? Uh, again, they're all learning the system at the same time. So I don't, I don't know much about Jeff Driscoll. That's kind of the wild card here. I think a lot of people might put Driscoll ahead of Fromm because they brought him, they brought Driscoll and they picked Driscoll, whereas Fromm is just already on the roster. Um, but I, I personally, I put Jake Fromm kind of in the driver's seat of that race. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. I do think Sam Hartman probably lands on the practice squad. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of competition out there for him and another team is willing to put him on their active roster. Maybe you see the commanders stash him on the active roster just because they don't want to lose him. But uh, we'll see. Um, you know, I didn't get to go down to the senior bowl. Uh, Sam, Sam Hartman from people I talked to were at the senior bowl this year, had kind of a mixed bag of practices, didn't do very well in the game. You know, so I don't I don't know how much competition there is for a guy like Sam Hartman. Uh, but I don't believe necessarily that, you know, it's like a slam dunk that he's going to be the number three quarterback. As far as the rest of the undrafted free agents go for the commanders, uh, Marcus Rosemey, Jack Saint, the wide receiver out of Georgia is really a player that I'm looking forward to seeing. I don't know if I was to go as far as to predict him to be on the 53 man roster. I think that's maybe something I could, I could, I could feel more confident trying to predict once we see them at least at rookie camp one practice. I, I still wouldn't be too bold about predicting a 53 man roster spot for UDFA after one practice. Um, but you know, haven't had a lot of time to watch a lot of these guys, um, corner cornerback Chagosi Anusium is, uh, is obviously a, a very attractive uh, option. We'll see what he looks like on the field as well. A lot of secondary guys in the UDFA class. And I think that's not, you know, by mistake. We talked about the secondary uh, a lot leading into the NFL draft. So I'm not really surprised to see that there. Um, so good question there. Robert says, hope you're feeling better. Thank you, Robert. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit better. Uh, hopefully we will continue to get better. Hoping to be 100% uh, by the middle of this week. Uh, with the commanders picking up uh, Jerzon Newton, a defensive tackle, wouldn't it make sense for us to trade either Jonathan Allen or Deron Payne and acquire someone who can man the left tackle spot and solidify our offensive line? So, uh, again, kind of a rookie pushing a veteran out question, but also an offensive line question. You know, I, I don't think a trade is coming. Would it make sense? Certainly could. You know what I mean? But again, at the end of the day, like if you're if you if you if you keep the scope on setting this team up for next year. You're talking about the only left tackle you would want to trade for in this instance would be one that you're going to have on like a long-term deal already, or a guy who's on like a one-year deal that you're going to extend into a long-term deal. So if you're going to do that, it's got to be a guy that you know, right now, but that you hope not that you project that, you know, is going to be your guy uh, for a long, long time um, or some top end draft capital next year. And Jonathan Allen, uh, specifically, you know what I mean? He's, he's getting older. He's, he's going to need a new contract. Like all these kinds of things are going to happen. Um, I just don't think you're going to get the return, uh, for him that, that I think a lot of people do And Deron Payne, I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, so no, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that, uh, the return, and this is kind of, this is like the, the, I don't call it confirmation bias, but it's kind of like, like being too close to it almost, right? Like we, we've seen John Allen and we watched Jonathan Allen and, and we've seen like, how much worse this defensive line would have been without him, right? With all the struggles that, the, that have been going on over the last few years. 
And so we think that other teams should value him the same, but honestly, they, they don't see that and they don't necessarily value him the same. And that age is a big part of the problem and, and all that stuff. Like nobody's going to trade for Jonathan Allen to make him the centerpiece of their defense. If that makes sense. If they trade for Jonathan Allen in the circumstances that he's in right now, they're bringing him in to be a piece. So they're not going to trade you say an all pro left tackle or a pro bowl left tackle to bring in a defensive lineman. Who's going to be a piece of their defense, not the piece of their defense if that makes sense. Um, but another qualify or another really good question there getting into championship classes. How many draft classes do the Washington Commanders need to nail in order to become legitimate championship contenders? That's how we're going to round out this mailbag episode of locked on commanders, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. And this episode of locked on commanders brought to you by monopoly. Go. We got to pause here to talk about monopoly. Go. And I know what you're saying. We've already talked about it, but there's just so much good stuff going on in this game that we got to keep talking about Monopoly Go. Because in Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends on time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you can unlock. And there's so many things that you can get. They've got unique stickers that you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with, hilarious emojis for taunting your friends when you smash their buildings and heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a Robot Pachinko Machine. That sounds amazing. And there's always new timed events that help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store Game On. Back now to wrap up this episode of Locked On Commanders, our first episode back after uh, I had to take a little bit of a hiatus for uh, for getting slammed with COVID for the third time. So that's that's great. Not any more fun the third time than it was the first two times. I can confirm that for anybody out there who is curious. Reverend Jim came through and asked, how many A to A plus graded drafts will the commanders likely need in order to build a roster that can perennially, perennial, perennially contend for the NFC championship. So yeah, so the Washington commanders have gotten a lot of good feedback for their NFL draft class. Um, a lot of A's, uh, the, the social team did up a graphic talking about all the A's that they've been getting from around uh, the media world. You know, I got a little bit of flack myself for giving them a B uh, overall. I think NFL.com gave them a B as well. And look, a B is not, is not bad at all. Like, you know, uh, uh, some people thought that I was like poo pooing on the draft class by giving it a B overall. That's, that's a, it's a pretty good grade. That's a pretty solid grade. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, whether you give them an A, whether you give them a B, how many do they need to become legitimate NFC championship contenders year in year out? I think if you're just looking at like boom, boom, like straight up draft classes, I think you need two. and you know, so how, so what does that mean? So if this year's class, right? So the, the initial grades, right. And I talked about this on the grades episode, the initial grades, uh, I really don't like doing initial grades because really all I'm telling you is how much I agree with what they did versus how much I don't agree with what they did. And like I said, in my own grades episode, a lot of where I dinged them, quote unquote, wasn't even about the player, right? Like I gave brand the selection of Brandon Coleman. I gave a C not because I don't like Brandon Coleman, but because I thought the team could have done things differently and, and shifted things around a little bit. That's literally all it was about. Um, same thing with Ben Sinnott. Um, the, the, the pick of Ben Sinnott is not, is, is not a problem. It's what I thought they should have done in that light. Right. But at the end of the day, if the team works out, then I'm not going to sit here three years from now and be like, ah, yeah, but I still think they should have gone. You know what I mean? No, like if, if he turns out to be an all pro, I'm not going to sit here three years from now and say, nah, the team shouldn't have drafted them there. Right. So in hindsight, if this team, when, when we look back at this draft class, if this draft class is an A, what is that going to look like? Well, if this draft class is an A, then Jane Daniels is a legit NFL quarterback, like bare minimum, right? Jane Daniels has to be a legit NFL quarterback because if, if, Jane Daniels is not an NFL quarterback, whether it's due to performance or injuries or something else. This draft class is not going to get an A, right? I think, can we all agree on that? I mean, in order for that to happen, in, in order for Jaden to, to flame out and for this class to still get an A, Jerzon Newton, Mike Sanders, still Benson, it would, would all have to be all pros, I think, right? Like your, all your three second round picks all have to be all pros. But for this class, as it is to be an A, say at the end of this season, Jane Daniels, 
has to show that he's a legit NFL quarterback. Doesn't have to win rookie of the year necessarily. Doesn't have to be an MVP. Just has to show, okay, we've got a quarterback. Jerzon Newton's got to be a contributor. Mike Sainer still has got to be a contributor. Benson has got to be a contributor. Brandon Coleman, I think, has got to uh, at least show flashes. You know what I mean? I would I would say he's got to be the starter, I, I think. I think that's fair to say, right? If he's if this class is going to be an A, I think Brandon Coleman has to be a starter. Let me know what you think about that. Luke McCaffrey's got to make the roster. Uh, I think Jordan McGee's got to make the roster. Dominique Hampton's got to make the roster. Javante Jean-Baptiste, the defensive end out of Notre Dame, he could go practice squad, and this class could still get an A. So if that's what an A class looks like this year, then I think if you get an A class again next year, if you get four or five contributing players immediately and then two or three roster spots after that and then a practice squad guy after that, then I think you will have the makings, right? You will have the trappings. If your next two draft classes, this one and next one, give you eight starters, 11 contributors, 11 to 12 contributors, and a couple of developmental guys, then I think you will be on your path to becoming NFC Championship contenders fairly quickly, uh, especially because I think next year's first round pick, you know, again, depending on how things pan out this year is either going to go off his tackle or it's going to go receiver or it's going to go edge rusher. I think one of those three categories next year. So that's what I would look at. Um, you know, again, if, if this class grades out at an A plus, um, I don't really do the pluses and minuses when I grade either, but I think if this class grades out to an A plus, then I think that accelerates things a little bit, right? If this thing grades out to an A minus, then maybe you need an A plus and then a B like after that. Um, but you know, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, I think that's at the end of the day, I think you need at least two of those classes from where this team currently stands. Maybe you think there's three. If you, if you think this team needs more than that, let me know in the comments section. But yeah, great question, Reverend. Thank you for coming through for that. Thank you everybody for coming through. If I didn't get your question here, don't worry. We're doing another mailbag episode tomorrow. Uh, so I will get your question there. If you've got other questions you want to throw into the mailbag, just throw them down here in the YouTube comment section or text me directly as a Locked On Commanders insider. If you're not already, go to jointsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders to become one today. Don't forget, make sure you also check out Locked On Sports Today, the first ever 24-7 live streaming sports channel on YouTube. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, or thanks for coming through on a regular basis like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day.